The other day we had a session uh, with one of my Tibetan friends and he, he posed this question, uh, you know, what do, we, what do you really want in, in life? And I, at first it sounds like such a stupid question. It's like, you know, so if you think of it, what do you really want? Um, more money, less money, more work, less work, uh, fix this, fix, fix that, uh, you know, more of this, less of that, whatever it is. But if you think a little bit deeper, uh, what do we really, really, really want? Um, there's a point where you actually are a little bit speechless because after the conventional mundane things of more money, less money, give me this or that is gone, uh, there's a sort of a, an emptiness, but that emptiness is not um, static. Um, so f if we could get Frankel, Frank, you know, Victor Frankel, he was, uh, think of this, he was 40 years old or just over 40 years old when he came out of the concentration camps. He's lost everything everything. His house, his pregnant wife uh, died, his parents died, his brother died. Um, he, he lost everything. He was a number, literally a number. So, uh, you know, and, and if we could ask him, um, how, do we, how do we navigate you know, with the challenges that we have in life? Um, um, th there's sort of things he would tell us, and I, I've listed about seven, so we're going to quickly run through seven things that he will remind us of. Uh, the first one will be that we're not built for homeostasis. You know, we, we, we constantly think that if I just have that, I'll be okay. We are not wired like that. Uh, a key characteristic of our nature as human beings is to break through the barriers that constantly constrain us. We are built um, to move forward. Um, th there's a tension in us, and, and our job is not to reduce that tension, but it's to ha harness that tension and to, and to move forward. We are built um, with intentionality. Uh, we, we are wired to intentionally strive forward and to find some form of meaning. Um, there's a Danish philosopher, Kierkegaard, who, you know, I don't know, 600 years ago said, the door to happiness opens outwards um, and it closes if you pull it inwards, uh, suggesting that Whatever we're looking for is connected to what we do for somebody or something else outside of ourselves. So this thing that, that um, we are not built for balance, we must understand that often we say, uh, I just want to balance my life and I just want this and I just want that, then I'll be okay. We don't work like that. We are forever going to want something else. The trick is to identify the things that we want that are useful and significant and not just arbitrary, you know, another pair of shoes and another this, another car or something like that. Those things are okay, but it, it doesn't last. The second thing Frankel would admire, uh, um, remind us of is that we have dignity. Um, you know, so many of us, we work, 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 work. And in a way, we become tools uh, in the pursuit of something. So we, 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 we actually... Um, um, we, we not degrade ourselves, but we become a means to an end. Uh, and we lose our sense of dignity that, that we are, manpower is such a degrading concept. I mean, can you imagine we talk about human resources and manpower, objectivizing the, 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 the people that we are? Because um, there, there's something really degrading about that, that we are not a means to an end. We have dignity, you know, we, we have the ability and, and we have the, the preciousness of life um, and, and, the, and the dignity that life has bestowed on us. And to waste that away uh, blindly, just in, in almost like a tool being used in manufacturing something or meaning some, you know, making something, that there's something about that, that that is also not quite right. And he will remind us that we have dignity to create and to rise above whatever circumstances is, is presented to us. A third thing that he will remind us of is uh, a thing called activism. Um, he would say that in the past, activism was accompanied by optimism. People were campaigning for a better tomorrow for many, many years. But today, activism is sort of coupled with pessimism. Um, we, we still want a better tomorrow, but the difference is that we are aware of the consequences if we do not change the world or change ourselves in this world. And there's a, a kind of a fatalism that, that came in and a pessimism. And um, we are subject to beliefs of, of what he would call pan-determinism, that 
things have already been decided and is what it is and we rebel against it but we feel sort of powerless and in a way have lost our trust in the future a little um, so he would encourage us to to regenerate the to back ourselves to trust yourself as a human being to claim back whatever you need to claim back and not to succumb to feelings of skepticism and, and become um, you know d despondent because you think it's, you know the world is just a bad place we have the power to become personal activists for our own independence and, and freedom um, a fourth thing that he will always remind us of is that existence is demanding it's we're always being asked and and he would often say that life is a taskmaster and every day, every morning we, we get up, um, you know, we ask questions, life asks questions of us. There's challenges in front of us. No one wants to be lectured to. We do not want to be lectured to. But often it feels like life is throwing us curved balls and we, we you know, we've been like lectured to almost in a way by life. Um, but that is a, that is a reality. Um, he uses the analogy of a chess game. So in the same way that if, can you imagine two people playing chess and somebody would say, so what is the best move? It's impossible. There is no best move uh, in chess. It depends on the moment and and what what the and in the same way the demand quality of life. There is no clear answer for anybody. Only us, me, in this moment will know what is the right move. Like in a chess game, only then can you can you can you respond. Uh, the fifth thing he will remind us of is personal uniqueness, and uh, he often uses this example of a circle. So you know. If I compare myself to greats, like say Mandela or uh, you know Bill Gates or Dalai Lama or people like that, I mean their scope of circle is so much bigger than mine. But that's not the point. The point is we each have a scope of our own circle, and the trick is to balance yourself and fill your circle in the best possible way, and do not compare yourself too much, uh, you know, with other people. Uh, in terms of the personal uniqueness, he he. He quotes um, a Jewish mystic who lived 2,000 years ago, Hillel, who, who sort of summed up a philosophy of life in, in three sentences. He said, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? If I don't do it now, uh, when will I do it? And if I do it just for myself, who am I? And with those three things, he said, if I don't do it, it's the, it's, you need to do it now. And, and your personal uniqueness and responsibility is uniquely um, including seemingly imperfection. So often we think, oh, I don't have this and I'm not as good as that. And, you know, we, we sort of look, at, look at our own imperfections. And Frankl will say, no, 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 you must turn it the other way around. That like a cell in the body, you know, a, a cell in the eye cannot do the job of a cell in the tongue or in the skin. You know, the cells are specialized. And in a way they are, if you put a, a, a cell from the eye in the, in the skin, it's not going to work. It's, it's imperfect for that. But that, that doesn't make it imperfect in itself. So each of us in our own way are uniquely able to deal with whatever is being put in front of us. And also the unique, uniqueness of the moment. Um, it, it's something that, that Frankl will say that we need to grasp this moment and make it count and make it work not only for ourselves, because then that will become a little bit worthless, but for the benefit of the people around us. Um, he will also bring a concept in like a balance sheet. So what is what is your balance sheet? Now, if you look at a balance sheet from your know, pros and cons and haves and have nots, or owed and, and, and want, um, we want things from life, mostly. We ask, I want more of this, I want more of that, less of this, you know, we want, we want. He will say that we need to consider what life is asking of us. So at any given point in time, we are being asked, so today, here I stand, so what is being demanded from me? What is the right thing from, for, for me to do? And there's this example of a prisoner who was um, sent to Devil's Island. It, this happened in the sort of 13, 1930s, 1940s, so it's a long time ago. But there was this guy, he was put on a ship in Marseille, destined for Devil's Island for life imprisonment. And uh, on the voyage, a fire broke out. On the boat and he was released and asked to help out you know to stem the fire and he saved 10 people apparently um, in that fire and later his his sentence was commuted he was set free he was sent back to France and he carried on with his life and he had this whole blossoming of a new life happening now if you had asked that guy when he was put on the ship you know for life imprisonment on Devil's Island what was his future looking like it would have been pretty bleak 
So Frankel will remind us that 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 in terms of a balance sheet, life may have opportunities for us in future that we don't know. You know, we don't know what lies ahead of us, but we need to stay optimistic and we need to forge forward because imagine something like that happen, you know, or imagine in each of you there's a book waiting or there's a project waiting or there's a there's a big thing waiting, but you don't you don't know it. So you you know for us to to look at the balance sheet uh, he will remind us that that we need to be mindful of um, of the great possibilities that may be uh, ahead in life. The last thing I think he would he would um, he would uh, try and tell us in a time like this is a concept between faith and freedom. Um, you know, often we we look at our own situation, and faith is such an interesting thing. You know, sometimes we 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 are not we don't accept faith. But faith is the reality of life. And he will say to us that we need to stand on top of our faith. Um, there is a balance between what we need to accept from life. This is this. This is how it is. I cannot change it. And things that we can change. The freedom um, that, that, that we have to defy faith and to defy our, uh, our own ex uh, situation. So, so that is a, is a tricky balance. But it depends on each of us to decide what is faith. What must I accept? And I must stand on top of it, despite. So there is a. He will remind us that we have the possibility to achieve despite our circumstances, not because of them, but despite of them, and of our freedom to to make those choices. And there's this uh, final quote that I will end this uh, chat, where he said, um, you know, sometimes a, a good thought pattern uh, to put in your mind is to live uh, as if you live as if you are living for a second time. And you are about to make the same mistakes as you did the first time. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it suggests that when, however we go through life, imagine that you're doing it for a second time. How will you do it? Because that, just with that thinking in your mind, you, you adopt a, a far more responsible um, and respectful attitude, uh, not only to yourself, but also to the people around you. Uh, yes. Have a great day. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you.